What's up YouTube, thanks for tuning in this video. I'm Nash and in this video we're gonna break down on the map the best places in the United States to start an RV park. But first, make sure to like this video and subscribe so we get off to a good start. All right guys, so I got the map here and I just wanna say first and foremost that we're probably not gonna talk a lot about this area up here because if you haven't noticed within the last two, three years, the general migration of the country has been from north to south. So if you're in the northern states, I really, I don't recommend those states for you. You can always find a diamond in the rough, but I'm gonna recommend most of these southern states because I think that's where the, the highest potential is. The highest net migration are then these areas, so we're gonna talk about that more than up north. So I just wanna first and foremost say, my best recommendation for starting an RV park would be anywhere in the Sun Belt. So anywhere in this southern belt here is gonna be your best opportunity to start an RV park. And the specific states that I'm gonna talk about are gonna be Arizona, Texas, Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Those to me are your best opportunities for success in starting an RV park, okay? If you're looking at maybe New Mexico or Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, you know, uh, maybe even Oklahoma, those aren't getting a lot of migration in those areas, even though they're in the Southern Belt. Um, and they're just not a lot of, for instance, like New Mexico, the infrastructure is not very good. Um, in some areas it does get snow. That's a, that to me, that's a no go. I, I don't want any snow. I don't want to have to be, you know, worrying about my pipes freezing over. Ideally, I want an area in which natural disasters are at a minimum. So like Arizona, uh, Texas, the only thing is Florida has hurricanes. So that's something to keep in mind. If you are considering Florida, it has hurricanes. Okay. But I'm gonna just first go first go into where I'm at, which is Texas, and talk a little bit about the area. So I'm in the central Texas region. I'm just a little bit outside of San Antonio and Austin. Austin is the number one fastest growing city in the US. San Antonio is in the top three, and I'm about 45 minutes away from both of those. So the strategy there, uh, I think for you guys, wherever you're at, find a fast growing city in any of these states and build right outside of it. And you're gonna you're probably gonna do great. Really, um, and also to understand the market. So in this area, the San Antonio Austin area, we have a lot of people coming from up north. They're called snowbirds, and they're people that live up north during the summertime, and in the wintertime when it gets cold, they come down in their RVs down to Texas because Texas has a pretty moderate winter most of the time. So right now it's like 65 degrees. The RVers, the we call them snowbirds, they like that, and so in the wintertime they come, you know, while it's freezing up north, and they come down to Texas, and especially in our area we have a lot of snowbirds. So there's a lot of competition for tourist RV parks. A lot of people that, you know, are marketing themselves as, hey, come stay at an RV park for, you know, three days, a week, two weeks, you know? And we said, you know what? There's too much competition in that regard. We don't want to market ourselves as that. What we do want to market ourselves as is what the demand is bearing on the market. So I work amongst the everyday person, the blue collar worker, and what I hear all the time in my area, in the Austin, San Antonio area, is there's nowhere to stay that's relatively cheap. Everything is super expensive. And I've heard all the time people say, you know what, I'm just gonna buy an RV and I'm just gonna live in an RV. I'm only gonna pay, you know, 500, 550 a month. Uh, and that's way cheaper than, you know, renting a one bedroom apartment. So we kept that in mind. We constructed our RV park. It is outside of town a little bit, but we marketed it as, hey, come stay with us, it's cheap. And as a result, we've been open since September of 2021. We've only had two people leave. So that's important wherever you are, in your region, is it a tourist area? Are there a lot of tourism? Is there a lot of tourism? Or are you looking to do affordable housing? Is that what the demand is? Understand that. And even if you are in a place like New Mexico, Oklahoma, or any of these states, I think since these states don't get any tourism really, they don't get as much as you know Texas, Arizona, or Florida, I would market yourself more as affordable housing. And I think you're gonna do better, you're gonna have less turnover. Uh, I think if you're trying to do tourism in rural New Mexico, not gonna work as well as you know maybe like Sedona, Arizona or something like that. Um, so that's where I'm at, but I would really say for Texas, if you're in the, the Dallas, Fort Worth area, you're probably gonna do pretty well. I mean, a lot of people are moving to Dallas. You know, NASDAQ just moved to Dallas, a lot of jobs there. Uh, if you're in Houston, you're gonna do well, Corpus Christi. Um, there are, you, you know, there is a little bit of a risk of hurricanes, um, but not as severe as Florida. Um, but really anything on this uh, eastern central area, especially I think the Texas Hill Country is the hottest place in the United States right now, but especially Texas. So anything like Austin, San Antonio area, it's super hot. You're gonna be doing well. Um, the place I would avoid maybe in Texas would be like Northern Texas. 
the panhandle like Amarillo and like West Texas, even though Odessa gets a lot of people moving there for oil. In general though, I think like Northern, like Abilene and Amarillo and all this, I, I would probably just avoid it really. There's nothing much out here. It's very barren and not a lot of uh, people living up there. Not a lot of people moving to that area. Ideally, we're looking for places that have a high net migration. The t state of Texas in general has a high net migration. However, this area here does not. So keep that in mind. Even if you're in a high net migration state, not every area is high net migration as well. Um, so moving on from Texas, we're going to go to Arizona. So Arizona, once again, is a hot state. Arizona, like Texas, has very good landlord friendly laws, which is another important thing. You want to move places where there's landlord friendly laws that work in your favor. Nothing worse than you, you know, investing $100,000 of your own money and then someone doesn't pay and you can't get them out. So for that reason, I'm in Texas. Texas is actually the most landlord friendly state in the nation. I think Arizona is right up there as well. Um, but any of these southern states usually have pretty good uh, landlord friendly laws, except for California, which has probably the worst landlord friendly laws and also the taxes. I, I, I wouldn't even invest in California. That's just me though. Um, but Arizona, specifically Phoenix. Phoenix is super hot. It is growing very fast. A lot of people moving to Phoenix. Phoenix is, um, I think, within the top uh, five in terms of migration. Pe most people are moving to the, the Phoenix uh, metro area in Arizona. However, I will say one area in Arizona that is probably overlooked a lot is going to be Kingman, Arizona. I actually have family that live in Kingman. It's on the west side of the state. Um, not, I think the Route 66 goes through there or it's pretty close. Um, but I know the I-40 goes through there. But I like Kingman because it's close to Havasu. It's like, I think it's like 40 minutes away from Havasu. It's not far from Vegas. You're not far from the Grand Canyon. You are maybe like four hours to the beach of California. You're not far from Utah. So it's a great centrally located area. Uh, it's a blue collar town. So I think the affordable living would do very well out there. Um, definitely keep an eye on Kingman if you're in Arizona. Also like Sedona. Is always going to do really good. However, it's super, super pricey. I mean, it's like the Beverly Hills of Arizona. So keep that in mind. But overall, I think Arizona is a great state. I think even Tucson has potential as well. Uh, but I think Arizona is somewhere you should consider. And uh, any of these little pockets are going to do pretty well. Maybe rural Arizona, you might have hard, a harder time getting people out there. Um, once again, I would probably try to market yourself as more affordable. But if you're in like Phoenix or you know maybe like uh, the Havasu area, Flagstaff is also a great area, a college town. And uh, it does get snow though, so uh, for, to me, snow's a no-go, but if you can deal with it, uh, Flagstaff's another great area as well. Um, moving on, um, we're gonna go to the next state, Georgia. Georgia is a great state. Um, I really like how they run things there. I think in the Atlanta metro, you'd probably do very well. Um, definitely Savannah, Georgia. You could, you could probably charge a luxury price if you're in Savannah. Um, where is it, uh, Mackin? Mackin as well is kind of a bigger town. Uh, probably a good opportunity in Mackin. Um, also, too, if in the northern area of Georgia, you have some you know, kind of get some runoff of the Appalachian Mountains. So you could definitely um, get a nice little spot up there if you uh, wanted to buy some rural property in Georgia. But overall, I think Georgia's ran pretty well. It'll probably suit you pretty well. Um, people out here are kind of more accustomed to the country living. So I think if you're in a rural area, you probably would be okay. Um, I just like Arizona kind of, if you're in a rural area, I wouldn't mark yourself so much as tourism, more as affordable. Uh, next would be, you know, the Carolinas. So South Carolina, Greenville uh, is a growing area. Myrtle Beach and um, Charleston, those are two great coastal towns. Once again, you're on the coast, so you will deal with a little bit more risk if you um, are on the coast because you have, you know, the chance of hurricanes. But overall, I think uh, the Carolinas are a great opportunity, specifically South Carolina. But overall, South Carolina, I think, has a lot of potential. South Carolina has more mobile home parks and RVers compared to North Carolina. So people might be more accustomed to living in alternative ways, I guess. Uh, but nonetheless, I think South Carolina has a lot of potential. And next up is going to be North Carolina. Now, this is kind of like the adventure state. It is landlord friendly, which I like. It does have state income tax, though, which is kind of a negative. Uh, but you have the Appalachian Mountains that run through most of the state or most of the western part of the state, and I think a place like Asheville is like the new Austin, Texas. Really, it has water all around it, and a lot of young people are moving there. Uh, so you know the prices are going to go way up. So if you buy property right outside of Asheville and market yourself, I'm sure you'll do pretty well, even for tourism or affordable housing. Um, Charlotte's growing like crazy. Greensboro. Raleigh, everywhere in North Carolina is growing like crazy. So I think North Carolina is a great state and it gets pretty good weather. Um, it's actually pretty warm. 
I don't think it gets too cold besides maybe the Appalachian Mountains. Um, I don't know about hurricanes, though. Like I was saying before, I don't know if hurricanes are an issue. But overall, I think North Carolina has a lot of potential. Somewhere you should definitely consider. And probably anywhere in the state, really, I think is going to be pretty good for you. Uh, next up is going to be Tennessee. Now, Tennessee is a part of a small select group of states that don't have any state income tax. Tennessee, Texas, Florida, um, where else? I can't remember the other ones. Um, I do think Arizona has state income tax. Uh, but Tennessee has no state income tax. Uh, so that's a major benefit for you. First and foremost, if you have an RV park, you got that income coming in, you're not paying any income tax. Um, I would say for Tennessee, I've been through a lot of the state. Um, I like Nashville a lot. Uh, it's, it's getting congested in Nashville. Nashville is kind of similar to Austin. Um, a lot of congestion, which means prices are probably shooting way up which means that's a perfect opportunity for you to come in and offer something for an alternative uh, way that's more affordable. But nonetheless, Na Nashville gets a lot of tourism too, so you can market either or. Um, Chattanooga is a beautiful place. A lot of people like Chattanooga. I think it's a great spot. Um, you're kind of at the crossroads of a lot. You're not far from the mountains, so I think that's another great spot. Um, Knoxville also, um, kind of more blue collar workers in Knox Knoxville. That's great for you. Um, but overall, I think Tennessee is a great state. Pretty good weather, um, kind of rural living, similar to Georgia, uh, no state income tax. So I think Tennessee has a ton of potential and a lot of people are moving here. A lot of people moving to Nashville. And when Nashville gets too expensive, they're moving to like Murfreesboro, which is a great, another great spot, Chattanooga, you know, places in the out, outskirts. So think about that too for all of these places is look at the big cities and then, you know, you gotta realize that these cities eventually are gonna, gonna become overcrowded, right? And people are gonna move away from them. So I really think the potential is if you look for the big, fast-growing cities and then maybe like 30 to 40 minutes outside of them is a lot of potential. So, um, and lastly, we're gonna go to Florida. Now, I love Florida. Florida is beautiful. It has, now Florida is the tourist state. I mean, you have people coming for, you know, a couple weeks at a time, a couple months at a time, a lot of snowbirds. I mean, Florida is like the definition of snowbird. So I think any tourist kind of RV park, you're gonna do pretty well. Um, the Panhandle really, I think, has a lot of potential. I think like uh, Panama City, great spot. Um, they have a, real, a lot, a string of really nice beaches there. Rosemary Beach, um, even Pensacola is very nice. Uh, a lot of people that live in you know this area here, you know, the Deep South, um, they take a little road trips to Pensacola because it's really the nicest beach, um, you know, to start, you know, on the East Coast. Because I really, you know, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas. These all don't really, you know, Louisiana, they don't really have the nicest beaches. So a lot of these people, you know, take a little road trip to Pensacola. So that'd be a great spot to set up. Um, also, I think Tallahassee's got some potential, uh, but not a lot of people are, you know, really going to Tallahassee. Uh, so I don't know if I would maybe set up there. I liked Jacksonville, really. It's got some rough parts, but um, like, for instance, St. Augustine, this whole area, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, a lot of people, this is a very desired area. It is super expensive though. So once again, you can come in, kind of meet that demand. Um, I think Northern Florida is gonna have less risk of hurricane compared to South Florida. Now South Florida is beautiful. You're gonna get a lot of RVers, a lot of uh, snowbirds uh, because of the beautiful weather. Florida is actually the warmest state in the winter time. So in terms of like snow, you're never gonna have to deal with that in Florida. Um, and also Florida is very landlord friendly. There's no state income tax. Uh, anything on the coast is probably gonna do pretty well. Aside from the hurricanes, um, my areas I like are like St. Augustine and, you know, like Jacksonville. Daytona can kind of get, I mean, there's some spots that are kind of run down, but I think it's got potential. Um, Melbourne is beautiful. I think Melbourne is very overlooked and you could definitely set up something very nice there. But keep in mind, all this real estate's going way up. So if you can get access to the funding, that'd be great. Um, but you might have to look more inland. Orlando probably has a lot of potential. Actually, a spot I really like is Lakeland, Florida. Um, it's in between a lot of stuff. You're kind of in between Tampa, in between Orlando. Um, I think it's a, it's a really good spot, Lakeland, Florida, in Polk County. Um, Naples, that's super, super luxury, but if you could land something in there, you'd probably be doing pretty well. Um, Tampa, they got hit by a hurricane pretty bad, so like I said, something to keep in mind. But I think the areas to watch would probably be the Panhandle and like the Jacksonville, North Florida area. Um, those are some growing areas and you know, like Jacksonville, you're not, you can take a little road trip up to Savannah. Um, you can kind of ride down that coast. So good spot. Um, but Florida to me is a great area to start an RV park. So many people moving to Florida. A lot of New Yorkers coming down with a lot of money 
and I just think it's going to continue to grow. And that's kind of my breakdown, guys. Um, I think some honorable mentions to put in here would be Colorado and Utah. The uh, reason why I don't have them on here is because they get cold, and that does affect business a little bit. And, you know, when it's wintertime, people are probably going from Colorado to maybe like, you know, Arizona, California, maybe Texas. Um, same with New York. You know, people are coming, you know, so people, the, the strategy for a lot of people is summertime, they, they, you know, stay where they're at, you know, in the northern states. But when it's wintertime, they're moving south. They're moving to places where it's more warm. So I think in any regard in real estate, but specifically RV parks, warmer states are going to do better. And that's just the way it is. But Colorado, um, I the reason why I don't have it on here is kind of starting to adopt uh, laws similar to California, which are not beneficial for you if you're an RV park owner. But I do think it has pockets of potential. For instance, Durango in the southern part of the state has a lot of potential. It's a small town and it's getting tourism and it's beautiful. It's not quite hit the mainstream yet. So I think it has a lot of potential. Even like Colorado Springs and a couple of different areas in Colorado are very, very worth looking into, I think. Uh, and then also Utah, kind of similar to Colorado. Utah is uh, a, an adventure state, kind of like North Carolina, except it's it's very cold, very cold in the north. Uh, and um, But I think Utah overall, it is pretty landlord friendly. You have uh, places like St. George and Cedar City that I think are going to continue to grow. They're kind of at the crossroads of a lot of things. You have Vegas, you have the Grand Canyon, you have multiple national parks throughout Utah. I think it's. I think a lot of people are going to be moving to that area, and I think if you could capitalize, there's still not even a lot of people really in southern Utah. So, a good opportunity. It's more desert-like, so it's not as cold as up north. But I still think like Saint, uh, I still think like uh, Salt Lake City is going to do well. Ogden, Provo, Orem. Those are those areas are going to do well. Um, a lot of college kids there. But I think Utah is an honorable mention. But I don't have it on this uh, list because of its weather up north it's extremely cold and frigid you're almost getting into the wyoming idaho kind of feel which not to not to say that people aren't in these areas but where the migration is really down south but thanks so much for watching guys i want to mention too if you want to see the migration of the united states which i highly recommend go on to the u.s census bureau the website and there's a little spot there that shows population growth and migration and you can see where everybody's moving to and you can see the little pockets of potential throughout the country, and you can plan your perfect RV park. I mean, that's what I did. I chose the central Texas area, the Texas Hill Country. But find your area, wherever you are, and comment down below what you have going on. I wanna hear uh, what you guys are doing. If you have any questions, make sure to comment those. Uh, if you wanna see how I started my RV park, watch this video to the side here. Uh, hit subscribe if you wanna see more videos about RV parks and real estate. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.